In this video, we're gonna look at forms-based authentication. Forms-based authentication allows you to develop an authentication script that is executed when users attempt to log in. You'll receive their username and password and then can authenticate against systems like Active Directory. While we support things like single sign-on or uh, OpenID Connect for Azure Active Directory, you may want to have some sort of um, additional authentication scheme that you know we don't directly support. So we're gonna look at how to update the forms authentication um, and kind of change it from the default value that is admin with any password. So when you first come to the login page, uh, if you type admin and then any password, you're logged in as admin. Uh, that is actually controlled in security, authentication, form, details. So if you click this details button here, you'll see that this is like kind of the default uh, authentication scheme. More or less, we're checking to see that the username passed in via the PS credential is admin. So um, that is uh, not very secure, obviously. So you're gonna want to implement some sort of security uh, scheme. So, you know, it might be easier to hook up to Azure Active Directory or WS Federated Services, but if you wanna just kind of change the default admin password, I'll show you how to do that here. So kind of the easiest way to go would be to create a variable that is in the platform for your admin account. So I've gone ahead and done that. Um, this is actually stored in the built-in local vault, which is in Credential Manager. So you're not storing this um, in a script or um, anywhere in PowerShell Universal. It's actually stored in Credential Manager. We're using an admin account variable and the value was actually a PS credential. So when you create uh, variable and you click secret and select the PS credential type, you're going to have the ability to select a username and password. So that's what I've set inside um, my uh, PS credential here. So that's what admin account is. Once you've defined a variable like this, if you go into authentication, you can actually reference that variable. So for example, we could say admin account dot username just to check to see if the admin account's username matches. And since I set it to admin, this should still work. So let's sign out and sign in. And you can see I can still log in. So even though now I'm getting that value from somewhere else, it's not hard coded in this script, I can still log in to my PowerShell Universal instance. The next step would be to check the password. And one way to do that is just to use uh, credential.getNetworkCredential.com um, password. So that actually decrypts the password uh, and then we can compare that to the password that is stored in the admin account. So now we're getting the admin account password from um, the vault and checking it against the password that was passed in. So if we save that. Now if I do admin and any password you can see I get bad uh, username and password. But if I type the correct password I'm logged in. So while this is much more secure than you know hard coding a password anywhere, we're still decrypting the passwords. And we can actually avoid that by comparing the um, secure strings directly. So this will actually be included in the lecture notes so that you don't have to define this yourself. I also found this on Stack Overflow, which I will reference the uh, Stack Overflow post that define this. But more or less, this uses this compare secure string function to take two secure strings and compare them without actually decrypting um, the passwords. So then what we can do uh, instead is uh, replace our uh, comparison of the passwords here with compare secure string. And the first secure string we want to compare is the one that's passed in from the user. And that will be credential.password. And then the second secure string we want to um, compare is the admin account password. So um, PS credentials just have a password and that is actually a secure string type. So if we save that and now we log in again, we have to type in the correct password. So if I type in admin and I type any password, it fails. But if I type in the correct password, you can see I'm logged in. And in this way, uh, I never decrypted the password. I'm storing it credential manager. Uh, so everything's a little more secure um, rather than having a password hard coded in your script. The other thing that you can do inside an authentication.ps1 file like this is provide additional claims. So by default, when you log in, you have a, a certain set of claims uh, based on your user account. And what a claim is used for is assigning roles. 
So if we go over to the roles page here, you can actually click this view claim information button and you're gonna see some information about this particular user. So we have the username, we have roles that this user is assigned and we have a hash assigned to that uh, role. So depending on your authentication type, like OpenID Connect, if you're hooked up to Azure Active Directory and you configure it correctly, you're gonna actually see your Azure Active Directory groups in here. If you're using Windows authentication, you're actually gonna see your uh, Windows group membership. But in this case, we, you know, we have a very basic authentication mechanism here, so it's not providing any additional roles. And these roles are just assigned by PowerShell Universal, so that's where those are coming from. So what we can do here is inside my authentication script, I can actually assign a new role. So for example, if I were to like hit Active Directory here, like uh, log into Active Directory, then I could you know look up this user's roles. And the reason we want to do it here is because of performance. You don't want to have to look up the user's roles every time we want to evaluate a role script. Plus, we can use um, claim to role mapping to really improve performance by just looking up the user's groups once. So we do have some uh, examples on our documentation page about how to uh, implement Active Directory lookups inside this script. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna assign a kind of uh, standard basic role. So I am gonna use the new PSU authorization claim. So you can then specify a type and a value and then pass that in to the claims property of uh, new PSU authentication result. So it does accept a script block, so technically you could do something like this. You wouldn't have to uh, put it in a variable. And um, from there, uh, this user will now have an additional claim, which is role, my role. So let's save that and log out. And now when we log back in, I type in my correct password log in, and now when I go to roles, uh, you can see we have view claims role, and now we have this additional um, claims here. So this doesn't do anything on its own. Um, it just says like this user has this additional claim, um, and that could be an Active Directory claim. In this case, it's just some custom claim. But what we can do with that claim is we can actually assign it to one of our roles. So if we click edit properties here, I could say role, my role, and now that is gonna map that user's claim to the administrator role. So because I'm getting that, that claim, I am then getting the administrator role. Um, and what that looks like inside the roles is um, rather than having a role script that's executing, we just have a claim type and claim value mapping. So very simple. All right, so now if I log out, and log back in, correct username and password. Oops. Let's see, I logged in and I'm still an administrator. I, I can tell that because I have settings and I have uh, security. Those are not available to non-administrators. So um, if we go to roles and view our claim information, you can see I've gotten that role based on that claim mapping. So in this video, we went over how to use the forms authentication script to um, do custom forms-based authentication, set claims based on the user logging in, and then assign those claims to roles within PowerShell Universal.